Let's examine the following example that deals with magnetic flux, induced EMF, and induced current. Suppose a rectangular loop of wire 5 cm by 9 cm that consists of 80 loops is positioned at a 90 degree angle with respect to the magnetic field. Now at a time of 0 seconds, we begin moving the loop down until it is completely removed from our external magnetic field. So let's look at the following diagram. So initially we have the following loop of wire. So we have 80 such loops that are positioned perpendicularly with respect to our external magnetic field, which is given by the following dots. And these dots represent our magnetic field lines that point out of the board. So, if it takes 0.2 seconds to take this loop of wire and move it into the following region where there is no magnetic field, and the magnetic field at this point is 0.5 Teslas, and the resistance in the wire is 10 ohms, in part A, find the change in magnetic flux during our move, in part B, find the induced EMF, in part C, find the induced electric current, and in part D, find the direction of our induced electric current. So let's begin with part A. So the change in our magnetic flux is equal to the final magnetic flux at this position minus the initial magnetic flux in this location. Now the magnetic flux is given by taking the product of the magnetic field B, the area A, and the cosine of the angle theta between these two vectors. Now in both cases, the angle is given to be zero degrees. The area vector points in the same direction as our magnetic field vector. So that implies cosine of zero is one in both cases. Cases. Now the magnetic field at this position is zero, so this goes to zero and we're left with negative 0.5 Teslas multiplied by 0.09 meters multiplied by 0.05 meters. So this will give us the area of the loop and this is our uniform magnetic field found in the initial position. So that means if we multiply these quantities we get negative 0.00225 Webers is our change in magnetic flux. Now let's move on to step two, find the induced EMF. So recall that induced EMF is equal to negative n, the number of loops of wire multiplied by the rate of change of our magnetic flux. So the change in our magnetic flux divided by the change in time, the time it takes for that change to take place. So we have negative 80 multiplied by negative 0.00225 Webers, which was found in part A, divided by a time of 0.2 seconds. And that gives us a voltage of 4.5 volts. So this is our induced EMF. Now let's move on to part C. Now we want to use this result to calculate the induced electric current. So we apply Ohm's law. The voltage is equal to the product of our current and our resistance, V equals IR. So we rearrange and solve for I. So I is equal our induced EMF, 4.5 volts, divided by the resistance of 10 ohms, and that gives us an electric current of 0.45. So this is our induced current inside our wire as we move our wire, our loops of wire down. Now finally, let's move on to part D find the direction. So to find the direction, we have to apply Lenz's law. So in the first step, we essentially have to figure out if our change in flux is decreasing or increasing. In other words, because we're moving our loops down, that implies that our magnetic flux is decreasing. And by Lenz's law, that implies the direction of our induced magnetic field created by the induced electric current will point in the same direction as our external magnetic field, so out of the board.
So once again, since the magnetic flux is decreasing by Lenz's law, the induced magnetic field points out of the board. Now we apply right hand rule number one. So we wrap our right hand around our loops of wire so that our fingers point in the same direction as the induced magnetic field. So out of the board we extend the thumb and the thumb points in this direction so it points in the counterclockwise direction. So we see by right hand rule number one the induced electric current points counterclockwise.